G'day all, I'm just um, at the computer here. I've, I'm working on um, my FX61 today. It's just about ready for a maiden as long as I can get some decent weather. The weather's been tragic here for uh, enough time now. I've come over it to be honest. It's windy, it's miserable. We're heading into our wet season, which is not good for um, the hobby. So what I want to do, I've got um, I've got my FX61 all set up, set up, ready to go. It's running a um, uh, that's running a Maytek F411 flight controller, wing flight controller, specific for the wing. Um, it's also kitted out with two run cams. I've got a run cam Eagle for FPV and the run cam split two for um, for recording. Uh, it's also got an S, uh, airspeed sensor, a Maytek airspeed sensor, and um, uh, the VTX on it is a Partom 1.5 gigahertz um, transmitter. So I'm hoping you get a fairly decent bit of range out of this setup. So what I've got to do now is um, uh, I want to go into iNav and update the firmware because a new firmware has come out, and we'll just go over all the settings. Make sure our return to home is set good. Um, Loiter is set okay. It's been set up to the configurations in iNav to the uh, right wind min mini drag. Um, so I don't know how it's going to fly out of the box with that. So we we'll have, might have to do a, a little bit of tuning with that. Yeah, so that's pretty much it. Um, it's running an R9 long range receiver. So it's, um, it's, a, it's not a bad setup. Just need a fine day to get it up in the air. So what we'll do now is we'll get into iNav and start doing a, a check and a and a, an upload of this um, latest firmware into the flight controller. All right. So let me just sort myself out here. All right. So here we are in iNav. I'm uh, just about to plug the flight controller into the computer here. Bear with me a second. Alright, so we're um, connected up. F411 board's connected up. Um, we'll connect, actually first up, we'll go to firmware flasher. Actually, sorry, what we'll do first is we'll just check the firmware we've got on here. So let's just connect um, we'll go into the CLI tab down the bottom and we'll just type in version and then hit enter uh, and it's telling me I'm running version INAV Matec 411 RSSI 2.5.1 June 16 2020 um, the reason I'm running the RSSI if anyone is doing the same setup and you want to run a you want to run the um, the Maytek airspeed sensor that airspeed sensor will only work using the RSSI you need to download the RSSI the Maytek 411 RSSI uh, firmware for it any of the others won't work it took me a while to work that one out okay so we're running 2.5.1 so let's let's go back here. We'll disconnect. Um, and we will go into firmware flasher tab. We'll put in our board. Scroll in RSSI, the Maytek F411 RSSI. We'll do a full chip erase. That's basically how I want it. We'll select the latest. So I'm running two point 2.5.1 we've got another version at 2.5.2 so that's the one I want I'll click that we'll load, load the firmware online and we'll flash that across click the flash button it's erasing the board as you can see and it'll start to write uh, the new firmware on top Programming, program, programming is successful, so we're there. 
Okay, so I'm going to keep the current settings that I've got at the moment. Like I said, if you're starting fresh, you're going to choose um, airplane or mini quad, whatever, whatever craft you're doing. So I'm keeping my current settings as is because I like them. Um, everything should be working. If I move the craft, it moves the diagram in the middle there. To um, we'll, what it'll do, we'll go into the CLI tab here, and we'll just double check our version again, just to make sure it's showing the five point a uh, two two point five point two. I think it was. And there we are. Inav Maytech RSSI two point five point two August four twenty twenty version so that's the latest version we've got there all right so everything's set up a better now I've got a, I've got all green here except for the navigation is safe uh, that's because the GPS is indoors here and it can't connect to, to enough satellites to turn that one blue like the others are up the top here so let's go into our mixer tab just to double check things I've got flying wing now airplane everything's set back up here again my outputs tab I'm just going to go through everything just to make sure um, nothing's altered here. Everything remains the same from how I had it set up. And your presets here, this is if you're starting from scratch. For the FX61 I've chosen the right wing mini drack. Um, if you select that it's a similar type of size, although that's running a smaller prop than what I've got on this. So there will be some fine tuning to do, but it's very similar. Now my ports tab should still be set up, GPS is still activated there, um, configurations tab, let's go in here and have a look. Uh, let's see, system configuration, please switch to 800 kilohertz if connected hardware allows it. I'm not sure whether, I'm not too sure, I'm just going to leave it that at that, even though it's telling me to switch, I'm not sure whether mine supports that or not probably does but I'm just I'll leave that at the moment I'll do a bit of homework on that one so everything's set up magnetometer you have off for a, a fixed wing you don't need the compass so that's off um, I don't have a compass anyway on my GPS pitot tube ADC that's correct and I've got the board around 180 degrees yaw so that's correct uh, GPS is on if we come over the other side battery voltage here Battery monitoring's on. Um, I have to calibrate the battery voltage to do that. You use uh, the calibration here, the voltage sensor. Um, you just adjust that up and down um, depending on how far out your battery is. So what you want to do is either get a multimeter onto a battery and find the overall voltage of the battery and then uh, you need to go into your oh, up the top here it's got a little battery you can see I'm not connected up so I'm showing zero volts but if you plug it in with the battery take your prop off it'll show you what current it's reading and if there's a difference between the multimeter and this up the top here you can adjust it through your voltage through your voltage uh, through your voltage scale here and it just means by either altering this just in micro in, tens you know like I would either go up 1110 or down to 1090 and then click save and reboot and just just see where it changes and try and match them up doing it like that um, until you get it correct reading um, in INAV as with the multimeter I've got my warning capacity here set to 25 percent uh, my critical is at 15 we'll scroll down to other features stop motor on low throttle this is all standard setup when you click the right wing mini drag, telemetry output, any of these you can add turn on if you need be. I'm not doing that. Enable motor and servo output is on, which is good. On screen display is on. Uh, permanently enable launch air mode you want on so that when you cut your throttle it turns it turns it off. You don't want that on if you've got a multi multi rotor. Um, I've got permanently enable launch mode for fixed wing. I have that on, I like that on. Just give it a shake and um, she'll take off for you and that's pretty much it so we'll save and reboot and that's fairly much that's pretty much it let's go into the fail safe next and just double check the return to home is active there it is there yes it's on so it's going to return to home 
when uh, it runs out of range or if I tell it to. PID tuning I'm not going to touch because that's just standard right wing mini drag presets. So if that, those presets don't suit or I find the plane is oscillating or it's behaving odd, I'll come in here and I'll, I'll adjust certain, certain things in here. Um, advanced tuning, we'll have a look in here. Multi rotor navigation, um, we're not going to touch that. Return to home landing and settings. Uh, return to home mode at least 5,000 centimeters, which is 50 meters. So you need to change this um, if you're setting it up new because I believe it only puts it at 10 meters, which is ridiculous. You want at least 50 meters minimum. So set it to change this to 5,000 centimeters for your return to home altitude. Climb before returning to home. I like that one selected. So if it hits a fail safe, it's, it's going to start going up to its altitude first before it starts heading back that way if it's in a position and it's lower than 50 meters and it starts coming back and gaining altitude to 50 meters on its way back it could hit a tree or something so I prefer it that way it's up to you though um, land after return to home now this is something I think I prefer it on you can stop it from landing as it's coming down the only reason I prefer this one on is if you're in a position where where let's say you're up high you can't see the plane um, and it's returned back to you it's just going to circle above you so if you're above clouds or you're in clouds or whatever you can't see the plane and you've had to fail safe and it's returned back to you you'll be able to hear it but you won't be able to, you won't know where it is so I find if you've got it to land at least it's going to come down you'll eventually see it you can turn the return to home off and take over manually and land it manually that way that's my preferred method so that's another one it's a, it's a choice you, you, you can make it's um, my preference so um, we're going to leave all these other settings below here because that's just standard settings Let's go across to, um, we're not going to touch anything in the position estimator. Fixed wing navigation setup, so your cruise mode, when you're doing waypoints, it, it'll go off these apparently. So crude mode setup, I'm not touching any of that. My max bank angle is 35, I'm not touching that unless I need to. You can adjust all this later after the maiden if you find it's not, um, not enough. Loiter radius. Uh, 5,000 centimeters as well so make sure that's set to 5,000 you want at least 50 meters in your loiter you can tighten that up or make it bigger it's up to you later on um, and that's pretty much it I'm not going to touch anything else as at this stage so you save and reboot if you've changed anything I'm not saving anything because that's how it's set my receiver is all set up ready to go I'm not going to go into that just at the moment but if you want to go into that you can and just check your um, channel settings which one my modes tab is already set up so I've got my arm switch set to channel 6 angle mode is channel 5 horizon mode is channel 5 on, this, on the middle switch uh, turn assist I've got turn assist on really why interesting okay I've got that set up to channel 8 I'm not sure why I've put turn assist on okay interesting FPV angle mix. Why have I got that on too? Okay, so it looks like I've got to alter a few of these from the firmware update. It's messed around with a few of these which I haven't set up by the look. See, manual mode should be set auto trim and auto tune. I'm going to have to go into these to reset all this. So we might do that. My fail safe is set. Kill switch. So I want auto tune set up on it. I want a servo auto trim on a switch for my maiden so we can adjust these two on the maiden eventually. Nav cruise needs to be set up on a switch. Manual mode will be my backup if I have a problem and need to get out of, um, if I have a satellite problem for whatever reason, GPS, I can take over manually and fully bring it back. Return to home setup. Well, we need to go through all this. 
because I've got settings here like this cam stabiliser I haven't set so this must be the errors I've got to address okay so that's what we'll do I'll go and grab a battery and we'll plug it in and turn the radio on take the prop off and we'll just reset all these modes again okay so props off main thing don't have your prop on We'll disconnect the craft and unplug it from the flight controller and then plug the battery in. And then plug the battery in. So let's turn on the radio. Welcome turn on, to Open TX. Turn on the transmitter. So my transmitter's all set up for the modes that I want, so it's just a matter of adjusting them in IMAV. Okay, let's plug a battery in here. What we'll do now actually, you know, we'll put the we'll plug the battery in first and then we'll then we'll plug it into the computer. Let's connect again. So we're all back again. I'm moving the plane. Let's go into the modes tab. We'll get and go to the receiver tab first and have a quick check. Everything's on there. I can see my pitch, my roll. There's my throttle. My yaw's not going. So I don't need that. I've got arm switch channel 6 channel 5 so I've got everything set up here so everything set up on my transmitter we'll go into the modes tab here and we'll just go through everything here and set it up back how it is to the transmitter so my arm switch there's my arm switch so that's correct angle mode manual mode is channel 5 so what we'll do is what we'll do is go down to manual mode because that was not set so we'll add a range channel 5 and drag the blue slider across over here manual mode horizon mode angle mode okay we'll save that so manual mode set manual mode. and you can see it changed to blue when I hit manual mode so that's set up properly horizon mode angle mode so that switch is fine. Let's go to this next switch here, my SA switch. Position hold activated. Return to home activated. Okay, so you've got position hold in the middle and return to home down the bottom. Position hold activated. Return to home activated. Position hold so we're activated. Looking at channel 7 here. Activated. I don't know why cam stabilizer is on. So what we'll do is clear that because we don't need cam stabilizer. And we will choose channel 7, position hold. Return to home activated. Position hold activated. And we want return to home also on channel 7. Return to home activated. Position hold. Now, position hold, I need to drag this blue slider into the middle where the blue notch is there, the little blue indicator. Return to home activated. So the blue indicator on channel 7 for return to home goes into the blue slider here, which will activate return to home. Position hold activated. And the blue slider here is in the middle, which will activate position hold as well. So we'll save that. So they're set up now. We'll go to the next switch, which is the SB. Altitude mode activated. So that's still correct. Altitude, you can see here. Altitude is channel 8. Nav cruise activated. And we want channel 8 with the switch down to be nav cruise. So there's nav cruise. We'll add channel 8 to that and adjust the slider right up to the top here. And you can see the little blue tab there at 2000. Altitude mode activated. Nav cruise activated. And now that's correct there. So we'll save that. Uh, SD switch. Servo auto trim, auto tune. Okay, so servo auto trim and auto tune I've got set up on my SD switch, which is by the servo look. Servo auto trim, auto tune. Is channel 10, according to the waypoint. Nav waypoint is um, active on channel 10. So we'll uncheck that. We don't need nav waypoint at the moment, not for our maiden anyway. So we'll add a range to servo auto trim, channel 10. Servo auto trim. Which is in the middle. That's correct as it is. 
and auto tune, auto -tune. also under channel 10 and we'll slide the slider up to where the little blue indicator is and we'll click save so they're Servo auto trim. they're all done auto -tune. that's correct save that I think we might be just about done. Auto My only other switch other than that is the SH. Lost craft alert. Lost craft alert. Which is for my beeper. Unarmed. Angle mode. Now I can select my beeper to channel 11 as well. That was my beeper mode. So if I put that across up here. Lost craft alert. Lost craft alert. It'll activate the beeper. Lost craft alert. Which is not doing for some reason at the moment, but anyway, I'll stop save. That's why. So let's save that. Lost craft alert. And that's the beeper is working Lost there. Lost craft alert. Okay. So we'll save that. And that's basically the modes all done again now. Armed. Unarmed. Horizon mode. Manual mode. Now turn Horizon assist. Mode. Can angle come off. I don't, I don't use turn assist so I don't know why that's on. FPV angle mix, I'm not sure why that's on either. I'll turn that off because I don't use that. Nav surface mode, I don't use that either. So I'll get rid of that. Nav altitude hold is on. Nav position hold is there. On channel 7, return to home. Nav waypoints, channel 12, nav cruise, manual mode, servo auto trim, auto tune, beeper, and fail safe. That's just my basic setup. Lost craft alert. That's my basic setup. Pretty much there, right there. And I'll add things to it or take things off as I um, get more confident with the craft. Okay, so that's basically it. Um, Adjustments we won't touch. GPS we don't need to touch. You're on the screen display if you want to set that up. Mine should still be set up from previous um, the dump that I put in there, which it is. Showing all my kilometers an hour, airspeed, altitude, GPS, everything's set up there, but you can add all that and you can modify all that later on. I don't need to show you. Go back into your CLI and do a diff all and dump and save both settings. So what we'll do here is I'll do a dump file and save it to my previous notepad folder. Copy to clipboard. And then we'll um, go back into our FX61 folder where I've got my stock dump file here. So we'll open that up and we'll clear it all. Select it all and just clear it and then paste the new dump file into here and save it and what else I'll do is do a diff all as well just clear the output history and we'll go diff all and that'll just give you all the difference differences that I've set up such, such as like my battery capacities warnings and criticals all that sort of stuff copy to clipboard and we'll do the exact same thing um, I want to go back into my folder, FX61 folder, and Notepad again, but don't copy over this one, I'll make a new one. We'll select all and delete that for the moment, and we'll paste that in there and save it as, don't save it because you'll overwrite your dump folder, so this is a, I'll name this one FX61 stock, uh, just make a default. Okay, and save it at that. So there you go. That's um, giving you two. Oops, that's giving you two now. So there your backups. If you need to, um, if you need to restore any any of your settings, if you've lost it or whatever, you just use these two here to um, paste and then save in the CLI, and that'll give you back your um, all your configurations and changes that you've made and that you like. I'm ready and confident that's going to perform pretty good. I'll do a double check. I'll take it outdoors eventually and do a double check when I've got GPS lock just to make sure my um, angle mode, horizon mode, self-leveling 
is all going the right way. That's very important because you don't want to be up in the air to find that's that's wrong. Okay, so that's pretty much it. That's all set up. Next step will be to throw it in the air when I get some decent weather. Thanks for watching everyone. Hope you enjoyed that little tutorial and run through there. Hope it helps you out. Um, we'll see you on the next video, hey? Have a good one. Bye for now.